Well, so we made it. We're done for today. We have uh, tomorrow remind the uh, traditional round tables on the implementation of the technical or technological solutions we, we saw today, and also on how the systems interact uh, between them so that we can see the, sec the, the sector coupling. Uh, tomorrow, Fernando will not be with us, so he will be the closing remarks uh, for today. He has prepared a beautiful uh, uh, okay, insights uh, on what we got uh, as lessons learned from today, and he's going to leave the land prepared for the discussion tomorrow. So I leave the floor to Fernando. Thank you, Chris. Okay, so I was preparing some notes here. But the first word, I think, is gratitude. Gratitude from all of us to all of us. I think it's been a very enriching day. I guess most of us came now with a, a new perspective on a challenging and complex issue. We were, Ruth and myself, taking notes in the same time we were trying to facilitate the progression of one session after the other. It was not easy. And in parallel, two or three people are taking detailed notes, and we have a several, mm, I mean, several pages document almost there, but it's very, very kind of draft and preliminary to, to be read as the conclusions. We try, but it's really too detailed. The document will eventually mm, be converted into a more formal conclusion session. So, so my last words and this kind of conclusion take us more kind of food for thought, more than a exhaustive, detailed uh, collection of what has been said today, because there are, there are many, many ideas. The, my, only, my only flow will be basically from the beginning to the very last moment of, of today. We began with a communication by Mr. Jovet. Uh, he presented Chile as a humble country in terms of contributions to emissions, and he was representing also the tensions in that country that made all the uh, implications to move the COP to, to Madrid. Uh, he mentioned many different aspects and, and, and presented things that went later on uh, to, taken by, by other speakers as well. The fact that no country can do this alone. He was presenting the political wills. No? After that, we, we got the, the lecture of Professor Sachs, and obviously he communicated many, many things. He knows about this issue. He's been working on this issue from many aspects in, for, for decades. And, and one of the things he was trying to be very synthetic in what is the greatest challenge in the decar decarbonization. And it was only one word, basically, was knowledge. Knowledge on what to do, hmm? pointing to the facts like corruption, greed, power, the lobbies, the inertia as problems, but the solutions will come with the identification of a plan. And uh, uh, from his talk, you can actually envision three E's. The E of economics, the E of ethics, the E of engineering. Too much diplomacy, in his words, too many lawyers, too many negotiators, and too little practicalities. So he was presenting the conference of today as an opportunity to put the engineers and scientists and technical people up front. No country can do this alone, again, was mentioned, and collectively, we have to set and build a roadmap. Every region needs to collaborate with a region that is nearby, but also in a global world where the things are move around at large scales, the contribution even of the humblest country can be, can be crucial. No? We need answers, no more theory, and he finished with this alarming message of emergency. Then Rector Cisneros made a, a strong point on how local things can be important, and he was presenting the commitment of the university, and the, the CV, the curriculum that has to be in, already incorporating the notion of climate change and how to uh, go to reduce the emissions from the very education of the, of the people, and how this university in particular uh, no, it was not only supporting this conference, but is engaged in a long-run commitment in this, in this way. After this, we enter in the session of roadmap. The session of roadmap oh, in itself uh, presented many, many aspects. It's very difficult to, to summarize, but for instance, Kobe uh, mentioned a, a, an interesting uh, play on words, from partnerships to partnering. 
This idea is basically that partners have to be more active. We tend to distribute roles. Okay, you do this, I do that. More kind of passive. No, you have to actually partner in, to, to engage into roles that perhaps nobody is covering and to incorporate to the roles that you were assigned beforehand. Maria, for instance, identify the fact that is a little, uh, mm, well, uh, actually uh, puzzling because in academia, in engineers, in, the, in, this, in these areas, we have the knowledge. But actual data, in most cases, come from the industry. So we have to make a better communication and flow between the data and the knowledge, and not only uh, playing uh, the theory on one side and the practic uh, practicalities in, in, in the other side. Also, it was very interesting to see uh, the vision of circular economy in a very broad perspective, not only focusing on the carbon cycle. It's a, it's a cycle about people. It's a cycle about many other things, about materials, about resources in a, in a, in a general perspective. No? The fair transition involves people, and it's not only because of a question of ethics, but also it's a question of functioning. No? So the roadmap was very inspiring. Continuing with the, with the sessions of today, we then enter with Manfred, who said, after 27 years, politics have not delivered. Now we have to work in the how. And then the sessions on the how started. You may remember this afternoon, evening, we had two. And in, before lunch, we had another two on the how, how to do things, the technology. Many aspects, many details were presented. Some of them were known by some of you, but the overall perspective, just ingredient pieces of information. No? The, the, we all suffer about the limitations on the batteries, for instance. So we need better and cheaper batteries urgently. Mm -hmm. The importance of accompanying mandates with uh, uh, accompanying measures, with, with, with uh, um, uh, understanding the market, the, the transition of the uh, economy of the new technologies. John, John Herrera said uh, something like, well, he, he presented several questions that were shocking. He was trying to provoke, no? For instance, he said, should we take away gas from our lives, especially in temperate zones? Uh, city, territory, pact uh, requires a new dialectic between countryside and the city. Look at the way we arrange the, the sessions today. Actually, the cities are something. Well, the cities are surrounded by a countryside, and the two kind of systems require probably uh, closer connections. The French conflict uh, was a, a good example presented saying that, look how complex the things can be, and with the best of the intentions to reduce the carbon emissions, then you get a social conflict that is now uh, expanding and, and, and hard to really um, find direct solution to it. Well, uh, we also saw interesting little examples like the city of Rosario in Argentina. Daniela was bringing uh, interesting local visions on, on how they were in, uh, making the energy more efficient, like how proud they felt about having a certification of the houses that were uh, efficient in terms of energy. Mm -hmm. Despite all of these, she was recognizing that only 9% reduction of emission was at the reach, so the capacity was all the way up to only 9%, but it's worth the effort, or at least in her words, and I think in probably in the mind of all of us. We traveled to Indonesia, and we saw some of the challenges of a place with 100 islands, the distribution of energy. That is uh, something to, to think, and not to uh, immediately do as you do in other places. I mean, in Spain, we don't have 100 islands. The things go in a completely different way. Don't export what we work, what works here. Try to think here and, and, and locally. You know? And this connects with another interesting concept that is more about thinking than doing, is the identification of uh, bottlenecks, uh, bottleneck logistics, mm -hmm. uh, where, where there is a point in which all the systems really uh, um, becomes very intensive in, in, in carbon. We heard the intentions of the aviation sector. It's interesting how much they can move into the technological way 
into the technology areas, but there are many other aspects associated to this way of transport that probably requires a very honest uh, discussion in the society as a whole. We also address in the session of transport the issues of long haul navigation, how hard is to evade this, and what are the current technologies. Apparently, again, one more speaker was saying that the, some technologies are there, perhaps not at the right scale yet, but uh, the, the technology is opening opportunities. Uh, some word of, ca of cautions were presented by FIBE saying that not much on synthetic biofuels because of the environmental risk. Sometimes the technologies must be revised not only in terms of carbon, but also in terms of other environmental potential impacts. Jose Manuel Vasallo presented an interesting paradox or a trade-off or whatever you want to call it. Two things that tend to go uh, opposite ways along the human history. The reduction of mobility versus no compromise of the quality of life. So the, reaching this equilibrium of reducing the mobility but keeping the quality of life in good terms is really an ambitious goal that might be and is probably likely to be uh, important in the, in the agendas. What else? Well, many, many things. Uh, it's, 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 it's really uh, hard to synthesize the session on, on industrial processes, those those steel, concrete, fertilizer things. No? There were many, many, many points. We know about how intensive they are in terms of carbon. And there, there, are, there are warning words interesting also to consider. If we move away from fossil fuels, then we are consuming land and water. So probably, again, we need to reach an equilibrium, and we need to see more than one perspective, not only carbon, right? We saw many, many examples. I'm not going to enter into details. Probably you may, you may know even much more than I about hydrogen, ammonia, or the hydrocarbon decarbonization possibilities we've been exposed to. For instance, the fossil-free fossil -free steel and the possibilities of implementing this in actually a, a, a large scale in a couple of years by the example that the, the Martin brought today. There are many, many things uh, that can be said. And, and regarding the last session on, on cities, uh, I better don't ruin the image that you have. It's so, it's so recent that you probably in, uh, have taken your own mental notes, much interesting and more, more lively than, than the ones that I can bring today. I think it is, it is very interesting and stimulating to see key progresses on zero carbon cities all over the world. So for tomorrow, there are two sessions waiting for you. Uh, this, the, the, the day of tomorrow will be from 9 to 12, and the two sessions, instead of being very topical, will be more cross-cutting issues. We'll be promoting the necessary discussion among different sectors that typically present conferences, talks, and workshops independently. Finally, as a little play, I was making a list of words, keywords. I think we we, most of us, came to this conference, especially under the tense international situation in many countries, actually in one of them that pushed the COP to Madrid. So we have all this in mind, in addition to the problems uh, of the climate emergency. We came with words like complexity, commitment, emergency, crisis, problems. And I think after the sessions of today, we may now have another list. The list can be alliances, countries, people, actors, technology, ready, opportunities, hopes, decarbonization, land, water, ecology, and finally, solutions, actions, plans, and above all, together. Thank you.